Hopefully this is it because this is like running to the bottom as this recording is being close to over, I think. Lord Tenma, your attorneys are here to see you. You're malevolent. You're malevolent. Malevolence. I'm saying that wrong, I think. I know it's malevolence or malevolence. Malevolence. Wait, you got a you got the spell tag on you. Um Why are you speaking like that? Oh, Mayor Tinma, you've returned. Yes. Well, Jinxie came by earlier to apply a new charm to my head. It seems to be suppressing that demon within me. That's a relief. Maybe we'll actually get somewhere this time. So, what can I do for you today? We'd like to ask about the rumor that Jinxie is possessed. Ah! Oh! She's al she allegedly left the yokai evidence at the scene while under a demon's power. At least, that's what the prosecution is going to claim at tomorrow's trial. <laughs> huh? Ka 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 ka! No match is this morning charm for me! Ah, oh, come on! The, the charm! Timotaro's back! Those foolish mortals! They shall regret blaming that child for my doings! I blew it. That question brought that yokai back. And he probably won't drop the act until Jinxie's name is cleared either. Um... Um, I was hoping you'd take a look at this. Hum, an offering to me. Quite admirable. But the best you could do is offer me to win my freedom. Ha ha ha. Right, right. I'll do my best. I think I already said, went through that conversation. So let's just stop the act and say, Rumor about Jinxie. We'd like to ask you about something your aide Florent LaBelle mentioned. Did you know Jinxie is rumored to be possessed? I know not of what you speak! You're not trying to protect Jinxie, are you? I, Tinbataro, Demon Lord of the Yokai, protect a mere mortal? Ka 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 ka! No affections do I possess for your race of humans! Please, we already proved. There was a third party disguised as a yokai at the scene. But if you're, you deny that tomorrow, we'll never be able to clear Mayor Tinma's name. But I have already told you, I know not what you speak! I don't think we'll get anything more out of him. It's all over unless we can somehow prove that Jinxie didn't plant that yokai evidence. Hey, Apollo, I think I've got this one. I think I pro can prove that she didn't do it. Really? Sure! I should be able to use psychology to explain that whole possession thing. Knock yourself out, then! Wow, Athena's really something. I can really count on her when it counts. the real story, please. Just tell us the real thing and come clean. Mayor Tenma, Jinxie isn't possessed. I believe her so-called possession episodes are a form of somnambulism. What? Somnambulism? You mean sequel sleepwalking? Yes. I believe she is exhibiting a rare form of the disorder. It's usually brought on by repressed stress. Mr. Mayor, didn't her symptoms start soon after she began her job in Ninetales Vale? Hmm, when the child visited last. She did speak of dreading yokai 
and how they rob her of sleep at each night. I knew it. That lack of sleep is causing her to enter an unconscious state. And that means she can't be trying to protect you. Wait, and that means she can't be trying... At least not on a conscious level. So then Tenmataro that... The Tenmataro that was spotted at the manor wasn't Jinxie. Sleepwalking, eh? <sighs> that would indeed explain the matter. Look! Tenmataro's spirit! It's left the mayor's body. Can you tell us the truth now, now Mayor Tenma? Very well. It's the least I could do for a superb exorcist such as you. The feathers and the tracks. Mayor Tenma. Mayor Tenma. You didn't leave those feathers at and tracks at the scene, did you? I did not. Neither I nor Jinxie have anything to do with that. That was the killer's doing, no doubt. I knew it! You suspect Florent is behind all of this? But why did he really want Nine Tails Veil that badly? Can you think of any reason why? Hmm. Looking back, he did seem fixated on Tenmataro for a spell. Ha! Ah, could it be? Perhaps he was attempting to release Tenmataro. That's crazy! Are you saying that Yokai is real? Whatever the case, Tenmataro brings nothing but pain and misfortune. It's as if the superstitions are worn. You must not gaze upon him, nor free him from his prison. But... How can people actually believe that? Well, at least we know who's behind this whole Tenmataro thing now. Yeah, and I think we need to have another nice long chat with Mr. LaBelle. Your d d dinner is ready, your malevolence! Ah! An offering to the Demon King! You may place it right there! The kitchen crew poured their heart and soul into making it! Did they now? Souls happen to be my fa a favorite of mine! Just hold the hearts next time! Yes, your malevolence. I'll remember that. How long is he planning to keep this yokai charade up? Well, we've already talked to Mr. Filch and Mr. Tenma, so why don't we get go see Florent and LaBelle next? Now that we know the truth, he won't be able to claim that Tenma Taro was Jinxie or the mayor anymore. But the real question is, how are we going to get him to admit it was him? I have a bad feeling about this. Like that, like the third, no, the fourth case in, um, in the first game, yeah. Okay, now let's practice that again, Vilci, from the top. Uh... Mr. LaBelle was in the foyer at the time of the crime. And when he, uh, heard a scream, uh, uh oh, heck, what was that next part again? Yeah! You have the memory capacity of a flea! This is the thirteenth time, you know. Now, a hundred times more, and we're done. What on earth are they practicing? Aw, I ain't cut out for this! Whoopsie daisy Oh! Oh, begging your pardon, Mr. LeBell, sir, it's just not bad! Unbelievable! What if you had sullied my outfit with those grubby hands of yours? 
Those gonna be paws of yours! Did Filch just filch LaBelle's wallet just now? <laughs> so, what do you think they're up to this time, Apollo? Hmm? Oh, it's you two! Eavesdropping our way! <laughs> you peasants are so tacky! Well, what do you want with me? Your confession to being the Tin Mataro imposter would be nice right about now. Um. Tin Mataro's two identity. Mr. Filch filled me in on a conversation you two had. And about how you told him not to say a word about seeing Tin Mataro. Filchy, you fool! I told you nothing good would come of you running your mouth! So, why did you want to keep Mr. Filch quiet like that, Mr. LaBelle? <laughs> why, to protect that darling little Jinxie, of course! But Jinxie was never really possessed. She was sleepwalking. Being asleep at the time, she couldn't have been consciously trying to protect the mayor. That also means she couldn't have been possibly... She couldn't possibly been Ten Mataro. Interesting! But where are you going with this? Since you asked so politely, I believe you have a different reason for trying to keep Mr. Filch quiet. That reason would be to deflect doubt away from the one who was really Ten Mataro. <laughs> Now this is getting interesting! Are you insinuating that I'm Tin Mataro? So sorry to disappoint, but I'm nothing of this sort! That's right! Mr. LaBelle even told me Tin Mataro- I said Tin Mataro was jinxy, you fool! Honestly, you have the memory capacity of a flea! Practice it a hundred times more! Times. Yipes! <laughs> so, um, have you been called to testify tomorrow? Yes! And I'm so looking forward to my courtroom debut! But you'll just have to wait until then! <laughs> oh, I'll be waiting! With a special piece of evidence I've been saving for you. <laughs> Filchy, wake up, you lazy bones! Huh? Oh, what? Was I sleeping? Oh, must have been that sweet cologne of yours, Mr. LaBelle. Made right... Made me right sleepy, it did. Well, it's time for your lesson on what to do and say tomorrow. Oh, I'm begging you! Not another lesson! I ain't cut out for this thinking and remembering stuff! <laughs> right in the schnozzle! Keep quiet and do exactly as I say! No! Please! Anything but another lesson! There they go. Missed our chance to get the truth out of him. Yeah, but we'll get the proof we need in the court. In court tomorrow, one way or another. All that's left now is to is that lie Jinxie told us. We'd better go clear that up before tomorrow. You think they're you think they're done questioning Jinxie? Maybe. Let's see if she's over on Yokai Lane shopping for more charms. Oh, she's at it again. She must be p uh, uh, sleepwalking again. 
Maybe if I speak softly, I won't startle her and get a charm plastered on my forehead. Psst. Jinxie. Huh? Oh, hello, Mr. Demon Lawyer. Ah, uh, my charms must have fallen off again. Phew, I guess I can avoid a charm slap by toning down my cords of steel. Are they done questioning you, Th Jinxie? Uh-huh. And on the way back, I stopped here to buy a new charm that was just released. Yeah, which one? Oh, um, the one with the nine-tailed fox and Timotaro. It shows them dancing together. Really? Two better rivals dancing together? Uh-huh. It's a charm for rebuilding burnt bridges. Oh, right. For the municipal merger issue. No, it's for the demon lawyer and the insomniac prosecutor. It'll stop you two from fighting like you did in court this morning. We weren't fighting. It was just spirited debate with... It's lo a lawyer... Ah! No fighting. <sighs> Charm slapped again. Apollo, if you're done playing around, let's find out what she's lying about. Jinxie, it seems you're starting to remember things. You already said the feathers and tracks weren't there when you discovered the crime. Have you remembered anything else that seems important? Eek! Like what? Tell us what you saw that day. Maybe you'll remember something else this time. Eek! Don't hit me, please. When I opened the door, Papa and Alderman Kyubi were collapsed in the dog's chamber. That's when Papa told me to call an ambulance and the police. That's all he said before he passed out in the chair. I knew it. She's holding something back. Needs to go over that again. I saw that. I saw that. Gotcha! You were very nervous when you said that's all he said, weren't you? I know because I saw your fingers move. As if you were going to slap someone with a charm. Please don't slap me. Huh? Listen to me, Jinxie. This is very important. Did Mayor Tinmouth say anything else to you? It was... It was nothing. He was just very... He was just talking in his sleep. Talking in his sleep? So you admit that he did say something else? <laughs> Yeek! How could you tell? Only, only a demon could have such powers. Oh, oh. Like I said, he was just talking in his sleep. I mean, why else would Papa say something like that? Could you be a little more specific? Before he fainted, he said, Forgive me, Jinxie. I killed all of them. Can you be? Wait. No, 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 no. He said, What? The mayor actually confessed to the crime? Oh, God, no. But. He didn't mean it. He couldn't possibly have known what he was saying. He was probably possessed, or maybe he was in the middle of a nightmare. A nightmare? No. This is a nightmare! This is one statement I wish I'd never heard. What in the world are we going to do now? 
return to the basics? That's right. Always believe in your client, no matter what happens. That is a lawyer's greatest and most trusted weapon. Right. Just believe in my client, even if all I can see ahead is darkness and despair. Jinxie, does Prosecutor Blackwell know about your father's confession? I didn't mention it when he was questioning me. I mean, there's no way Papa's the killer! I hope Fulbright doesn't come out of nowhere and said, Ha ha ha! I fell! I caught you in the act! Or something like that. Why would the mayor confess like that? Could he really have been dreaming or simply delirious? Who knows? But I sure feel like I'm living a nightmare right now. Apollo, what are we going to do about tomorrow's trial? The crime scene was locked tight until Jinxie arrived and our client... Clients even confessed. Not only that, Jinxie has been accused of planning the yokai evidence. Both the mayor and Jinxie are going to pr prison if we don't do something. I know, I know. Well, let's see here. Our lack of a third party in the locked room is a major problem. Jinxie has testified that she... When she first opened the door, Alderman Kiyubi and Mayor Tenma were the only people she saw in the fox chamber. But the real killer must have been hiding in the, there as well. Considering the room was locked tight, that's the only logical explanation. Our mystery person must have fled the fox chamber when it was open. And that's when Jinxie saw the... What she, that's when Jinxie saw what she thought was Tenmataro. I think it just kind of clicked in me. Remember, remember way back when, uh, when, what's his name? Uh, Filch said that his grandfather said that there was a hidden treasure in there. What happens? What would, what would, it would be kind of funny if the hidden treasure that was very valuable was, uh, like, the Tin Mataro costume. Because, I mean, why, like, yeah, th there's probably only one jet that's just like that or something, and, yeah, just, just, yeah, just kind of putting a thought there, but that's just me being a little over, over the top thinking. <laughs> but, but... Papa and the Aldermen were the only people there. I didn't see anyone else. What's going on here? LaBelle's extremely pale, but he's far from transparent. So just how did he hide himself at the scene of the crime? He hid himself in the chamber. Whatever it takes in court tomorrow, Apollo. We have to take down that dirty, rotten, Tinamataro Florent LaBelle. Right. We'll get him with a legal exorcism. Justice style. Is that to be continued? That's to be continued. That only took two hours. So let me just uh, say I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'm going to save it like on here, but uh, erase that probably somewhere sometime soon. So yeah, with that, hope you all enjoyed. And hope to catch you all next time. And I hope you all have a great day.